Well, thank you for allowing me to interview you yet again. I haven't annoyed you to the place of you say no. <laughs> um, today, I wanted to interview you about the chakras. 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 It's not like Chicago. Well, um, I was listening to this academic speak about it, and he says, I'm going to give Westerners permission to say chakras and say that's the English pronunciation. But the correct pronunciation is chakras. <laughs> so, um, okay, so that's a good lead into my first question. Um, so, the chakra system that is most pervasive in our culture, the one that you see posters of and t shirts, and um, is the seven chakra system. It's got these colors, kind of more um, rainbow colors attached to them. And my understanding is that is much more of a Western take on the chakra, chakra system. Um, and that uh, some of the more traditional teachings have been either taken out or... Um, so, so not to um, disparage the Western model, but it seems like there's almost two different systems. Would you agree? I would agree, but I would also consider that Within India itself, there are variations. Right. The point is, as long as any modification helps the student, then it's a good modification, whether it's Western or Eastern, doesn't matter. If it's not helpful, it simply waters down something, then that would be objective. So helping, helping the student, I mean, it, I think the Western model attributes um, psychological um, attributes to each chakra, where my understanding in the Tantra system, where you see most of the work around the chakras, there's not really psychological um, things attributed to certain chakras. Is that true in your understanding? That may be a problem of what Westerners call psychology. Okay. <clears throat> it's... It, in India, there is not kind of the sense that you have a underlying consciousness. You are consciousness. So psychology from the Indian strict point of view would, would have a different definition. Could you elaborate? I'm not sure I can, but Take another example, <clears throat> like ice or snow. Okay? We who are not used to much snow, we have either snow or no snow. But if you talk to people who live in that area, like Eskimos, okay, there's, I believe, seven different varieties of snow. Right. Okay? So to translate that in a language which doesn't include those seven levels would be difficult. Uh, okay, I, I understand what you're saying, um, but back to helping the students. So I see the validity of using the more Western model where they're attributing love to the heart chakra or survival to the root chakra. Um, but to your knowledge, are there writings about this in, in the more traditional viewpoint of chakras? The writings, if you look at strict writings, are all in uh, aphorisms, like sutras. Right. Because the subject was intended to learn directly from a teacher. So these kind of writings are simply reference book for the teacher. Right. They don't elaborate. Right. Some elaboration that came, came later by Indians, who, who were students of Western schools, so they very often were not very explicit about it. It is more recent when, you know, more people who were grounded both in the Western system, who were scholars of Western University, but very, very, very solidly grounded on the Indian philosophy. They are the only ones who can make it more clear, like Swami Dayananda. So, 
I believe what you're saying, but I also at the same time want to say, but that's not fair. What about what, like, how do people find a teacher? There's not many authentically great teachers around. Do you, are you going to say that's your individual karma if you can't find one? <laughs> <laughs> Everything is karma. Anyway. <laughs> it, it, it also reminds me of my teacher, Mr. Anger, saying, what would happen when I die? My knowledge would die with me. On a level that is true, but deep down, knowledge is firstly infinite, and then it can come up again. Somebody else can revive it. To assume that no one will be able to do it is not a very fair assumption. So is that your way of saying it's possible to not have an actual teacher? That knowledge, knowledge exists, and to a very hardened practitioner, um, the, the information could come through practice. See, even within Indian system, okay, the the whole understanding of that you are not ever dying or you are never born. So what appears to be born can be an enlightened being, and we have examples of that. Right. Right. Shankara, a very famous one in Vedanta. By the time he was 80 years old, he was writing phenomenal stuff. So um, just a, a couple more things about the Western versus Eastern model. So uh, reading about the chakras in the West, it was um, attributed to a group called the esoterics or theosophy, um, also Carl Jung took a big interest in the chakras. And then that is when all these colors and gems and um, things came into the chakra system. They put it in, they kind of put this psychological overlay um, and added a lot of things to it. Um, so I think what you're saying back to my first question is if it's helping the student, then it's okay. Let's take color for example. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. If I see a color, I'm seeing something. You see the same color. I cannot be sure that you are seeing the same thing. It's true. So when, when Indians described the colors, the intention was much more understand what you see. Whereas when Westerners describe the color, they mean blue is blue, and it's not. So you're saying the Western mind's a little more um, it's, habituated? Or it is too conditioned by logic. Right. Whereas the subject is not necessarily logical in that sense. So there's one system, one ch chakra system in uh, Tantra, and I don't remember what lineage it is, but they see red and then gold, or gold and then red and then gold and then red and then gold, and it's not this rainbow of colors, but then that changes. Do you, do you have any experience? Of that? No, I don't know that one, but that simply proves what I said earlier, right. that within India, there are divisions. Right. See, each teacher tries to teach in a way to make his student understand something. Right. And when the student doesn't understand in the teacher's opinion, they change things. Well, the only um, conundrum I see with the Western overlay of things is, and to please correct me if my understanding is wrong, is that part of you, the reason you're using the chakras is to realize, your, uh, to become self-realized, to realize there's no separation, et cetera. But if you put a psychological overlay on the chakras, then what you're doing is you're focusing on your psychological, like, I need to be more generous. I'm gonna focus on my heart chakra. So then you're focusing more on self and constructed self, and then you're not really working on the bigger picture. I mean, is that a problem? Mm, well, <laughs> it's, it's a process through which one has to go through. I wouldn't call it a problem. Okay. If you are not prepared to handle the deeper aspect, then what you are handling is correct for you. You can't call it wrong. But could people get tripped up in the um, using the chakras to, you know? If, if they think that by knowing something, let's say in the Western sense, they know everything, then they have tripped up. But the same is a problem with Indians who think they know everything. Mm -hmm. 
one must be grounded in the fact that knowledge is infinite. You cannot claim you know everything. If you make that mistake, you are blocking any further progress. So you have no problem with the Western model. You're saying I, don't even, I would not necessarily call it a Western model. Well, how about the Western editions? The completely keep. Meaning addition, not addition. Yes, I understand. Okay. But keep the Western and Eastern out of it. Okay. It's human problem or human challenge. Okay. Human perspective. Some humans have it differently depending on their background. But it has nothing to do with East and West. The fact that majority of what we call Western model comes from people who are affected by Western upbringing is not to be emphasized too much. So would you say that you blend the knowledge bases kind of together, depending on not what you Not by mean? any active effort. Okay. I'm a product of initially an Indian upbringing, very heavily modified, modified by my father. Did you talk about the chakras with your father? Briefly, yeah, okay. not much. But you knew they existed, which most kids yeah. in America probably don't. Uh, what I learned from my father with regard to chakras was witnessing him discussing that with other peers of, you know, from his school. So just by listening to these elders discussing it, not, there was no active teaching of it. So where do you, where does your knowledge of the chakras, because I know you teach a, a very involved workshop about it, where do you feel that that knowledge is drawn from? Can you say? From, from a variety of things, including maybe previous incarnation. Uh, my father, other yoga teachers I met, Westerners I've spoken to, my leading, mixture of things. But would you say you're most informed by your own experience of them? Yes, without meaning to say that that is sort of more correct than anything else. I don't claim to know everything about chakras. I didn't say that you did, but you know a lot more than I do. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, I, I know that you've mentioned this in your classes, but for those that haven't come to those classes, um, can you talk about, I think there's an understanding that we're climbing the ladder of the chakras, um, that maybe that they're um, like a ladder of consciousness that you have to kind of deal with the lower chakras before you go up, but you, you actually have a different take on that. See, the whole system is to clarify something in the head. Okay? When I'm dealing with Muladhara chakra, Anything I gain from that by way of that knowledge doesn't go to the next step. Okay? It goes directly to the brain. Okay? Then I come to Swadhisthana Chakra, whatever I clarify in that goes to the head. It's not a ladder you're climbing up. Each rung is complete in itself with regard to its own problems. When that is cleared up, the knowledge happens in the head in the brain. Are you talking about the brain thought or are you talking mind? Both. Could you say a little bit more about that? What's the difference between thought and mind? Mind is a feeling faculty. Thought can influence the mind. Mind can also influence thought. But very often in this kind of work, what is forgotten is that essentially mind comes first. I feel hungry. Okay? That feeling is then modified by thought that I want to eat particular kind of foods or not eat particular kind of foods. So the body, the body realizes something before that thinking mind can grasp it. Yes. How does that work? Is it, is, it, um, is it organs that are feeling it? Like you just give an example of my stomach is hungry, but it's more than that too, right? It's not just- It's much person. more than that. If you feel happy, happy, which organ is feeling happy? You can feel joy in your heart. You can feel joy in your- No, belly. that's a Western uh, kind of stamp on it. Every cell in the body feels happy. 
you cannot relate it to a particular organ. But when I uh, when I talk to more skeptical people about the energy body, I always give the example: Have you ever had the feeling of your heart being open and you know loving, or a or a physical feeling of you know heartbreak where like you know there's this heaviness on your heart? And they all go, Yeah, of course. And I say, Well, what is that? That is not that's not something you can look. Somebody find with, an MRI with with, with trained in. Um, shall I say, Western methods, they receive some bad news. And what do they do? Oh, my God. Right? Right. And generally, an Indian would not do that. He would say, oh, my God. To their heart. To their, their heart. Yeah. From that, a conclusion is drawn that somebody feels it only logically, somebody feels it in the heart. That's a conclusion for which there is no proof at all. But we, I think it's a universal feeling, that heartbreak and, and love. Uh, feeling it here. So I agree that um, maybe you're saying the whole body feels it, but we just feel it more here, or it's because we somebody think may it sense it more here. Okay. Yeah. When the shock happens to somebody who gets some bad news, right. the effect of the shock affects the whole body. But that body then creates a particular effect on the heart, and you get a heart attack. That doesn't mean the heart only feels it. Right, but doesn't it feel it more? It feels a conclusion of what the rest of the body feels. So I get disappointing news that's heartbreaking, and my whole body feels this despair. Um, but the sensation that I have is here. I like somebody just put a that weight is because on my that is, if I may, that is because you are not sensitive to the whole body. So really, the whole body is in despair. Whole body feels. Mm -hmm. My whole being feels it. That includes the body. Okay, I'm not trying to be challenging here. I'm trying to understand. So, but if we go back to the chakras as these energy centers, it makes sense to me that I would feel it here, or I feel like a bad feeling about something in my stomach, um, or oh my god, it's all on this kind of center line, which is energetically I, the chakras. I don't think I disagree. The fact that the ultimate effect is felt in a particular organ is not disputable. That's, as you said earlier, it's a universal experience. Right? But within that, to conclude that the rest of the body doesn't feel it is not correct. The whole body feels it. Then the climax of it may go up to a particular organ. But if we go, if we extrapolate with what you're saying with um, focusing on the different areas of the body, then what's the point if it's all... It's all one. I mean, I know it all is one, but <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Like, you're, if, if I want to work on my heart chakra and you're saying it's a whole body thing, then why am I focusing here? First of all, heart chakra has nothing to do with the physical heart. I understand. Okay. So when you say I'm dealing with heart chakra, you are assuming that it is here. Yes, I am. Heart chakra, when we talk of a chakra, relates to certain energy. Even energy is not a very good word. But it relates to a particular aspect of the human being. That aspect affects the whole organism, not just a particular organ. But because the whole organism is affected, its effect may go more predominantly that you feel it in a particular organ. But that also depends, I think, on, an, on, an, on a cultured assumption. Mm -hmm. Too much um, Hallmark cards with hearts on their chest. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying I can feel my heart chakra in the throat? Are you saying that? <clears throat> See, every chakra is affected by all the five elements. Right. But the predominant of the element may be one. The other four add to it. If you want to get mathematical about it, when I feel something is hot, the actual agni aspect of that, the heat, is only half. That feeling includes the other four, one eighth of each. Are you saying when the body feels hot or you feel a part of your body that is hot? 
any anything I feel as hot, anything okay. I perceive as hot. Okay, go on. Same applies to all the senses. Okay. A pure earth element or a pure water element, pure fire element cannot be perceived by human being. What you perceive is half of that element. The other half is made up by one eighth of the rest. Um, so what's the, what is there a prescribed desired um, balance of the chakra? I mean, should you, obviously the body's made up more of earth element and water element than it is of space. Not true. Not true. It's all equal. It's made up of all fire. Elements. I know, but equally? Depends on which part you're looking at. Can you say more about that? If I'm looking at the weight of my body. Yeah. That sense of weight is made up by earth element half, but the other elements are present there also. But not in equal measure. Not in equal measure. That's what I'm saying. But only with regard to weight. I see. So that depends on what you're focusing what on? What you're focusing. If I'm feeling very hot, that has less to do with earth element. Has to do with fire element. Fire element. And if you're cold, lack, lack of fire. Lack of fire. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we can't really talk about the chakras without talking about the elements, which we just said were earth, water, fire, fire, wind, mm -hmm. and space. And space. And so in the chakra system that we know that we work with the most in the West here in, in the US, in California, there's the association of the earth element is Muladhara, the root chakra. But my understanding is that you don't, that the earth element doesn't have to live in this earth, the, in the first chakra. You can put it wherever you need it. It is everywhere. Right. But I think that's a, one of the problems of the more westernized model is I think people think, oh, this is earth element, this is water element, this is fire, this is air or wind. Um, and that we think that they can only exist there, but can you work with the different elements and the different chakras? That's what, that's my question. Look, first of all, although there are seven chakras and that's where- Well, both, that's debatable too, right? We're yeah. gonna talk about that. <laughs> there are thousands of chakras in the body. Right. In order to understand working of human being, human psyche, these have been given very specific names and locations. But... Uh, <clears throat> well, if we're working with five elements and seven chakras, who doesn't get an element? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, but See, not the, joking. <laughs> the, the attempt to even connect the chakras, the main chakras with different plexuses in the body is itself Questionable. Right. Yeah, when people do that, they are very comfortable with the knowledge of physiology. And they want to take this knowledge, which has little to do with that kind of physiology, but make it match the physiology. Right. That, that is like taking um, a, a, a square and trying to put it into a round circle. Have you ever seen a square manhole cover? No, <laughs> I have not. Have you? Depends on what the hole is. If the hole is a square, <laughs> okay. you have to have a square cover. Yeah, I, yeah, okay. On a round hole, if you make a square cover, it is to prevent it from falling inside. I see. Uh, okay, so back to my question, can you work with any of the elements in any of the chakras? Like, let, let's say... In fact, you should. Yeah, okay. You should. And then can you give just a little bit of information on um, how you might do that? Like, pick, pick one of the chakras and one of the elements that we don't traditionally... Like, not earth and root, right? Like, earth and heart or, or something. Let's say you pick out element. Okay. 
predominant, predominant sensation connected to is smell. So I concentrate on smell. But within that, I have to recognize that smell comes from space. That smell has a fire to it also. The smell has fluidity to it also. When I smell something, it feels like it's touching me also. So that's air element is there. All these have to be very seriously, interestingly looked at to understand the main element of smell. The main sense of smell. Oh, oh, sense of smell. Mm -hmm. okay. Although smell is predominantly smell, it improves all these other aspects to it. Okay, was that your example of how you would work with an yeah. element in a different... I don't quite understand that, sorry. Can you, can you say, I don't... Um, so you're saying working with earth element, but where, when you talked about the sense of smell, okay, what chakra am I working with? You're working with same chakra. The first cha chakra? The, the first chakra. Okay. More like that but I was chakra. saying, can you give an example of where you would work with a different element that's not generally associated? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. I go to earth element, predominant element, the uh, sensation is smell. Right. Then I look at that smell, I feel the smell. Let's say I'm actually sensing some smell. Right. Okay. Then I look at the smell and say, does this smell not have a sense of space? Which means if I work with space element in there, that sense of smell, which is narrow, expands, becomes much bigger. That bigness has nothing to do with the sense itself. It is to do with the space element. I understand that, but what chakra are you working with? The same chakra. Okay, but what if you want to work? Okay, but what if you want to work with the earth element in the third chakra? Okay, then you take the third chakra. Yeah. Predominant element there is what? I don't know. I don't remember. The fire. Okay. Oh yes, I'm sorry. The element. Yes. Sorry, okay. I thought you were asking sense. So, does that fire not have any kind of heaviness? Sure, it does. Not heaviness as measurable by a scale, but the sense of heaviness is there. Fire can be very heavy and can be very light. Mm -hmm. So how about an example of you have, you, you used the example earlier of too much heat. So that would be too much fire. And let's say, I'll just use myself as an example, someone who's having hot flashes and I wanna work with them through the chakras or the elements, and my heat is from here to here. It doesn't, it's not really down, it's it's diaphragm up. So I want to quiet that fire. Do I, how do I know? Do I choose water? Because water douses fire, or do I use earth? Because that I, can put I, a fire. I would try with all the elements. And see what works best and for you. See me. what works best for you. And then when you and say what works best for you will not necessarily work best for someone else. Right. Um, and then when you say work with it, am I just meditating it, bringing it in? Am I? Uh, yeah, if you understand what meditation is, yes. And then, I mean, this subject is so vast, my head is exploding. I need some earth element in my head. Um, <laughs> but um, going, okay, so talking about now the mantras that go with the chakras, like, the I think it's also a misunderstanding that the chalk that the seed mantras go with the chakras, but they actually go with the elements. Is that correct? They go with the elements. Right. So if I'm trying to put earth element on my fire, then I want to I want to chant. You want to chant yam. Yam. That's not, the not lam. Um, La, lam is the earth element. Uh, lam. Yes. Okay. Right. So then, so I'm visualizing my. Manipura fire, but I want to douse it a little bit with some earth. So then I meditate and maybe repeat the Bija mantra. Except I earth. think there would be a mistake because you are grounding with water element. Water element. Okay. That's that was my but in a sense, yeah, experiment with each of the other four and see what gives you a better sense of coolness. 
only don't make an assumption that two, that that will work for everybody. Right. It may or it may not. Right. Or that in your body, today, water element works good, but tomorrow <laughs> it may be another element. Oh my God, who has time to make breakfast if you've got to like do all this experimentation? Maybe with breakfast others. is the biggest problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So um, do you want to say anything else about a million things that I've asked you? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a huge subject. Yeah. So, and even as I try to teach it, quite apart from my learning it, in the process of teaching, both from the way I want to express it, as well as from the way somebody asks questions about it, I learn more. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a trick question, but I'm going to ask you to see what you do with it. Um, are the chakras real? <clears throat> Depends on what you mean by real. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so can you... Can you comment on that? So we can't cut you open and say, oh, look, there's a chakra. No. But see, if you look at chakras in relation to a particular plexus, then it is a physical reality. But if you look at chakras as something affecting your organic system, then that's organic. If you look at chakra as a pranic system, then it's pranic and you cannot locate it like that. Depends on what particular aspect of chakra you are looking at. And that's just going to depend on the level of practitioner and where they are? Where they are. Mm -hmm. See, if you go to a grand master who has, let's say, 10 students, each student may be asked to emphasize something different, depending on where they are. Mm -hmm. A grand master, but that makes me think of your teacher. Did he ever talk about the chakras? Very little. What about Swami Dayananda? A little more, but from a very different perspective. From an energetic standpoint? Yeah. Okay, so that leads me to another question that the chakras are often thought of or referred as energy centers. Um, and we're not gonna we're not gonna go with the more westernized they that they coordinate with the plexuses in the body. Um, can you talk a little bit about what that means, like an energy center? And like, what, what is that energy? <laughs> I know, it's a tough question. I, That's why I'm asking I'm you. I'm an engineer <laughs> trained in, um, in the University of London. So energy to me, has a very different meaning than the way a typical Californian uses that word. <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> energy that I feel as an individual, mm -hmm. if everybody else feels the same energy, then that is an energy. There's something real about it, whether it is uh, physical, organic, or pranic, has to be come, you know, you have to come to some conclusion. But if I feel it and nobody else feels it, then it could be an illusion. And worse still, it could be a delusion. So then you're basing whether it's real on other, a lot of, a lot of others experiencing a similar thing or enough people? A lot of enough people that are trained in this particular right. science. Right, so a master not, yoga. Yeah, not layman. Right, right. So can we see, measure, I mean, like I'm trying to just get to the root of what is this energy? Like, is it, is it like a lesser electromagnetic or is it, you know, like what? It could, it could have an electromagnetic component, but it's not, that's not all that it is. See, you, we, we are jumping to a Western model. Right, I know. If you stay with the Indian model of the five elements, then you can say, okay, it is predominant of this, 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 or that.
So that is a little bit of a problem with the- It's a problem because you are trying to put a square peg into a round hole. <laughs> Back to that, are we? <laughs> um, agreed. So, okay, so then when we're working with the chakras, let's go with a typical Westerner wants to work with the chakras, they're at a slight disadvantage because they've been habituated to this more sciencey model. Um, well, they will have an advantage and a disadvantage. Disadvantage would be that they try to put everything into their logical system. Right. The advantage is that they are not conditioned by the other either. And what would you say is the downside of uh, the other? Like what you, how you were brought up? Uh, there's a lot of blind belief, which is religion based. Right. That conditioning the Westerner would not have. You would look at it curiously and say, oh, interesting. Whereas the Indian actually believes that. Would that make the typical Indian, let's say, more suggestible to feeling the chakras and not really like they're imagining that they're feeling it? I mean. Yeah, there is a danger. Mm -hmm. And so how does one know? Through a good teacher? A good teacher would tell them that not to go for any belief like that. You feel something, we will work with that feeling. Don't jump into, uh, you know, that this is Saraswati or Krishna or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, just to compare it to like a real life thing, like there's many times in my life where I'm like, absolutely sure, this is the best thing, right thing to do. It, you know, I'm like, absolutely no doubt about it. And then as life goes on, I'm like, what was I thinking? Right, so there's an example of a feeling that I was absolutely sure was correct, but time showed me it wasn't correct. Is that what you're talking about, the danger? <clears throat> so then if, again, if you don't have the teacher, then you just have to go through time and see, like it's time tested. Even if you have a teacher, <clears throat> two students going to the same teacher, one will learn much more, the other may not. So why is that that difference? The difference is because a student helped by a teacher ultimately learns within himself or herself. Mm -hmm. Teacher cannot teach you anything real. He can point at something. Whether you are able to walk in that direction or not differs from individual to individual. That's why from the same school, same professors, different quality students come out. Uh, okay, so I want to bring it a little bit more back to the traditional chakras and the, um, I'll call it the column of energy, um, you can correct me, um, the central channel, the Shashuna, as it's called, and the Ida and the Pingala. Can you describe the relationship of those three um, things with the chakras? Are they related? Do they? They are related <clears throat> in a see all these three, Ida, Pingala, and Sushumna, all of them take the deeper understanding of the chakra, knowledge of the chakra, to modify the brain. See, all the charts, for example, that were drawn, were drawn on two dimensions. Mm -hmm. okay. So they show the Sushumna, or not the Sushumna, but the Ida and Pingala going like that. Like a helix. Like a, yeah. Whereas a better way to look at it would be to look at it as a three-dimensional model. Right. So it's, it's a full helix. Right. That sense of movement, if you look at, you know, you, you fill your bathtub with water yeah. and empty it, and you see the whirlpool going as the water is draining. It is that source of energy, but instead of going down, it is moving upwards. 
So, so is one way to say it, think of it is those are the channels that carry the energy of the chakras. Is Understanding correct? of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Energy in that sense that it's an, it's an energy of knowledge. So I, I can visualize the, you're saying three, imagine the helix in the three dimension, but chakras are generally, as you're saying, shown in, on a two dimensional space with a swirl. Yes. So, so that's not exactly quite correct. It's not really helpful. So it's more of a, a round. All round the, facing up, mm -hmm. okay. not facing this way. But if it's a ball, you're saying round, facing up they're all the same no design. if it is a flat okay not a ball right if it's a flat it's facing upwards right but so far i have never seen a picture drawn that way interesting and is that how you feel it in your own body interesting you know sahasra chakra they try to draw it like it's easy because it's on the head <laughs> but i have a question about that so um uh, Sahasra is sometimes referred to, and I might be totally wrong about this, is, is that's where it's all energy is going. So that it's not the same type of chakra as the ones under it because it's going up. Is that wrong? Knowledge always goes to the head. Right, but it's beyond, right? When you see it drawn, there's light going upwards connecting to everything. I would think that is a way of indicating that you know, enlightenment, if you will, happens because all the confusion is here anyway. But I have had, for sure, I have had that experience of light beaming out of my head, like a certain couple things that happened to me in my life where that happened to me. And it just felt like this crown going straight up. And yeah, I'm, but let's say you are in a dark room and that crown is going up. Have you seen light outside as a reason? So you're saying the light would be all the way around? Is that what you're saying? It'd be all the way around, but there is no light per se. Correct. It's a sensation. It's a sensation, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But when um, when they draw uh, more enlightened figures, even like Jesus and stuff, you see that Symbolic way to yeah. explain something. Mm -hmm. you know, everybody that is of that stature has got a halo. Right. If you actually meet the person, there is no halo behind that head. If you come across a very nice person, you feel their energy. Okay. Yeah. But you can't translate it into is it heat, light, electricity? What Sometimes we use the language like, oh, that person's so warm. We do. Or, or that person's so cold, right? And, yes. and I, yeah, I think of it now this way. It's interesting that that has made its way into our, or, oh, I just got this idea, light bulb over my head, right? We think of that. Um, so it's Let's say you meet a person who has got what you call very warm energy. Okay. You are with that person, but you don't know any language. What would you feel? Love and friendliness. You can't call it that because you don't know the language. You feel a sensation. Warm, yeah, warm. Um, but, but you can't call it warm. You don't know the language. <laughs> um, but I, I've been, I've been with people who would speak a different language, and we, but I can get a sense of the person. Yeah. And it's their. That sense has nothing to do with warm per se. Right. I describe it as such. You describe it as such. Mm -hmm. Like here is a human being. We call her Andrea. But is that Andrea? No. A label given is Andrea. Label given is Leslie. Label given is Ramanan. But I'm not Ramanan per se. I'm not R A N A N A N B. What are you? I'm a person who's been given that label. We do that to everything. There is a door. D O O R. D-O-O-R has nothing to do with what that door is. But we ascribe things to words and then we all agree on what they and mean. And then we all agree on it. Yeah. Yeah. And then if an outsider comes who's just learned our language, we say, no, you have an accent. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> um, okay. So I want to talk, um, I want you to talk about a little bit more about the elements. Um, I know we talked a bit about them already, but um, I think 
and maybe this is just me, but like I can visualize earth and I, I can think of water, lots of expressions of water and fire and wind, but space, space is the hardest element I think to wrap our head around. Um, what do you mean? You don't feel space? I don't think that I feel space. Like if I put, if I move my arm through space, I don't feel resistance. I might feel air if it's hot or cold or something like that. Yeah, and, but the fact that you are able to move means there's space. Touch this here and try to move. There's no space there. If if you if you are sleeping, is there space? You mean in the room with me? <laughs> in your sensation. In my if I'm sleeping, no. I don't think so. It's a different space. It's a different space? Yeah. Like a dream space? A dream space. In deep sleep, that is absent also. But what is it? It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's everywhere, and, and you can't and, see it, and you can't feel it. But the everywhere, it is not everywhere. Everywhere is that's, it. That's a good description. Like that. Everywhere is it. Yeah. And okay. it's a very peculiar element of the five, in that nothing happens to that. I put this sofa here. It's occupying space. But in the process, nothing has happened to space. As soon as the sofa is removed from here, the space is fine. So, same, same with fire. There is a huge fire somewhere. The, the, the space appears heated up. But when the fire dies down, the space is fine. But fire is something that I can look at a building on fire, the fire is there. Space, like you're saying, everything is space. Everything is space. So what is everything the, is in space? Everything is in space, right? So what is the chakra that is associated with space? Sasa chakra. Okay. And why is that in your opinion or in your knowledge? Because it is closely related to what we call enlightenment. Meaning there is a sense of complete dissociation with all illusion created by mind. It's a freedom which doesn't have an opposite. Every other freedom you can think of has an opposite. Because we talk of freedom from something. Mm -hmm. okay. If we talk of enlightenment and call it freedom from illusion, one has to understand illusion doesn't exist from the perspective of that enlightenment at all. Whereas if you are, if you are feeling cold and you get warmed up, you are free from cold. But you still know that cold is there, out there. Mm -hmm. okay. Within enlightenment, it is not like that. So would um, a practitioner benefit from focusing on the crown chakra and, in, and inviting the space element in? Or should they, how would they know that that's the best thing for them? at that time no they should not do that okay that can be very dangerous so that's more like it happens not okay. you yeah right okay. actively pushing it without other preparation right so Say it's like nuclear energy yeah as an example okay by itself there's nothing wrong with that energy but you can use it to destroy things you can use it to cure things same nuclear energy used in very different ways so, so when I was asking you earlier about how the seventh, the top crown chakra, whatever you want to call it, it is slightly different because it's receiving all of the work of the others. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But without that preparation, you can directly go to that chakra and try to do things with it. Uh, fortunately, most people won't succeed. But if anybody succeeds, then I would look at, you know, if he's a bad person, he's going to use that enlightened sense to do bad things. Mm -hmm. If he's a good person, he would use it to do good things. Right. right. 
So then, um, okay, uh, just a couple, just maybe two more questions. Um, so how would the, you know, um, well-intentioned yoga practitioner um, using the chakra system, how do they know where to start? Like what would, I mean, most people are gonna say, well, I'm gonna start with the earth element and my root chakra, is that a good way to begin? Do you begin in just the bottom? Um, or do you say, well, this is what's going on in my life right now. I think I'm going to work on the heart chakra. I mean, like, can you say a little bit how you would, I know you're going to do a whole workshop on that. And those of you let's, that let's look at our yeah. chakra. The basic problem if somebody has a problem has to do with sense of possession. Sense of position of the chakra? Of, of things. Okay. Right? I have a car. I have a house. I have a variety of things. These are all my possessions. The assumption is that either I was lucky and I got them, or um, I earned it. Both are wrong assumptions. First of all, it's neither luck nor that I earned it. I have it as a result of past karma. Not by my effort that I think I have. Now, what does that effort do to me? I possess things and I'm very attached to things. And somehow I believe that I will be happier with more possessions. So go, I, I run after that aspect, getting more and more and more and more. When actually possessing more makes me worried about not preserving it and makes it, has a completely opposite effect. So understanding that sensibly, what should be my attitude in working with this chakra? Whatever sense of possession I have has to be looked upon as, does this make me more greedy? Or am I considering this as a God-given gift that I want to readily share with others? Those are two very different people. One is affected negatively by bad aspect of Artha Chakra. The other is affected positively. But both of them are making a mistake in the sense that if you let go of the negative and the positive, what is the real element? Of that chakra. Uh, neutral. That earth element is new. What is the neutral element? Neutral element is complete understanding of I don't possess these things. Seeing them as God given gift. Okay? Now you have brought in a very interesting element called God in. Okay? Mm -hmm. If that element of God is understood, completely, not as a belief, then you can go to the next chakra. Wow, that's keeping the bar pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you're, okay, I'm curious, that's a beautiful description, but it also has a psychological overlay. So is that, um, that's your teaching on the first, one of your teachings on the first chakra? Um, I would like to teach that, for that I have to master it much more. I'm not free of these possessions myself. But at every level, there are these barriers. Mm -hmm. And the idea is those barriers create an imprisonment. Mm -hmm. How can I free myself from that imprisonment? But again, that's a psychological overlay. So where did you get that teaching from? Just your own experience? A no, lot of reading, a lot of teaching other people gave me. Mm -hmm. people who whenever I kind of fell down with something questioned it like why so you have in your uh, when you teach about the chakras there's a chart that you generously give us with a lot of the things that you're saying on it um, that's just something that you wrote yourself from the feelings of the things that you have experienced no, from my experience and again I yeah. would say largely from my father whenever for example something negative happened that initially I would see him 
getting angry about it. As he grew older and he understood more of this, he began to say with everything like, you do your best, the rest is Ishwaricha, God's will. But he lived it, not just, it was not a belief that he came up with. He came up with that understanding. So, although if something really bad happened, he would still get agitated about it. In general, compared to almost anyone else that I knew, nothing bothered him. But not in a negative sense that, you know, he's now not concerned about anything. Right. He was deeply concerned. But at the same time, he understood that there is a, there is a much more powerful it. divine will working behind everything. Mm -hmm. um, this may be for another one of our talks, but something that you just said, um, you know, all the possessions that you have, as you use an example, are because of past karma. The problem I have with that statement is it can be interpreted as people who don't have anything, don't have anything because of their past karma. Right? Yeah, but for you to say that is bad karma for you. I, I, well, I, I, it's there's this kind of blaming or or don't do that. Well, I, I'm trying not to do it, but I'm look, that. I see a dog hurting mm -hmm. has been hurt badly. Okay. That situation is presented to me. The only thing I have to do with that is how can I help this dog? Right. Anything saying, oh, yeah, the dog deserved it. That's why it's like that. That's bad for me. That's not where I should be going. A human being who is sick okay, is definitely because of past karma. But that's for your understanding. It's not to take that attitude into life. Okay? When somebody is hurting badly like that, see if you can help. If you can't help, even pray for it, which is a help. So pride for uh, what I have or blame for what I don't have is creating more bad karma. More karma. <laughs> and it's very immediate effect. You know, if, if somebody is hurting and I say, well, that's because of your bad karma, then what happens immediately when I'm hurting? You, like that's your bad karma. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's helpful. And then with your example, last question, I think. Um, because you use the first uh, chakra, you use the earth element. Can you just say, and again, this is one of these trick questions, how does the physical earth element touch the non-physical first chakra? It's through this energy that, it, that we were talking about earlier that we can't... No, it does an effect. <clears throat> earth element, if we take the pure physical element of earth, it's giving me a sense of weight mm -hmm. connected to this planet. Although it's connected to the entire cosmos, I don't feel that connection. I feel connection to Earth. If I jump up, I fall down here. I don't go to the sun or the moon. But if I'm close to moon, physically, I'm going to feel that connection. So now in light of that understanding, I know that Every body is attracted to every other physical body. That attraction is the earth element. That sounds like gravity. It is gravity. Okay. So is the earth element earth, like soil, or is it no, gravity? It's a, it's a physical weight of this body mm -hmm. compared to the weight of the earth. Nice. That's the attraction between the two of them. But this body is also attracted to the moon and all other planets. The reason I don't get physically attracted there is not because that connection is not there. If I pray to the sun god, if you will, okay, there is that connection. But it's so far away that it has less effect on me, even though the planet is heavier and bigger than Earth. Okay, it's not a planet, it's a star. But it's too far away to, to have this effect. Okay, so in conclusion, I know that you have this workshop coming up um, about the chakras, and I think it's over two weekends. And so can you just tell us maybe in a few sentences what how you're planning to um, 
present the information. Initially emphasizing how the five elements are part of each chakra, even though one element may predominate. The second thing I'd like to include in that is how the nadis are connected to this, particularly 14 major nadis. And I want to include in it that in order to start learning about chakra and applying that in your practice, there is some other preparation needed. Without that preparation, directly going to the chakras is not very helpful unless you are in a direct contact with a grandmaster. Are you a grandmaster? No. Where are you going to go? Looking for a grandmaster. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully if people can't come to the um, workshop live, we're going to figure out a way that we can offer it, the recording of it, right? Yeah, I yeah. don't know how helpful that would be because they can't ask me questions. Right, but do you want to say anything else about the chakras? I'm going to, I'd like to talk to you maybe in one of our next conversations um, about the nadis, um, because I know you're going to bring those in, um, but we only had an hour or so today to talk. So it's a vast subject. Hey, again, time is a I know, I know. That's why I have to move in. I haven't told you that. And I'm going to interview you every day. Just kidding. <laughs> that can, would, that wouldn't last very long. But, um, all right. So no, you don't want to say anything else about the chakras. Um, how, have, you find them, have you found them helpful? in your own practice, let's end with that. I find them helpful only if the clear sense is, and I don't forget it, that the reason behind working on the chakra is to do away with anything that is creating lack of freedom. If the intention of working by chakra is to do anything other than seek that freedom, then I hope I have enough sense to stay away from that. And using the chakras is not the only way. It's it's yes. one of the many ways one that you can ways. what make your karma better, work towards enlightenment. Work towards enlightenment. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. As always, wonderful. I hope it works. Our behind the camera person. Andrea, thank you. <laughs>